All right, so if you've got a Ram or a FCA or now Stellantis product, particularly Rams with the eTorque system that pop up with this little icon right here for your start stop, and then it no longer wants to work anymore, I'm gonna show you what the likely culprit is. So the first thing you're gonna wanna do is if you have an OBD code reader, you're gonna to wanna to turn the truck on into auxiliary mode, and I'm gonna to have to get in and shut the door. Leave that how it is. So you'll notice here it's not picking up any codes. Don't let that fool you. You're gonna to wanna to go and check out your DTCs because that's where the actual code is for this. For this vehicle, I'm going down to Chrysler and Jeep. Go engine DTCs. And there you have it. P152E. Now I've actually already gone through and figured out what was going on with this truck. But let's go ahead and open the hood. So this P152E, there's already a TSB on it from FCA, now Stellantis. And it comes down to an engine hood switch. So, and this kind of gives you a rough look of where it is on, on the truck. There's the wiring diagram. It tells you how to figure out if it's actually messed up or not. But I'll show you guys what exactly is wrong. And for whatever reason, these stop-start systems have a bunch of redundant systems built in. And as you guys can already see, I've already kind of been in here, but this is the issue. Now, when I was into this before, it had a bunch of grime and dirt and everything else in it, which I did my best to clean out. I did not remove the switch from the vehicle. I just left it in there. Um, just because the vehicle is still under warranty and I had to bring the truck back in to get another TSB uh, done on it. So I just figured I would let them deal with this at that time. So that's what I ended up doing. That part's on order as well as this striker up here for it. So that's going to be where your issue is. Now I think just for this video, we're going to pop up all of these tabs and get a better look at this little switch and see if there's anything we can do with it. So I'm just popping up and removing all of these pull tabs with my nylon pry tools. You can get these at Harbor Freight. And I have done videos on them. That's easy enough. So now we can have better access to look at this switch. There we go. So here's the switch. You can see it's a relatively big switch. So I just took it off because we're going to have a look at it and inspect it. The inside of this looks good. You want to make sure there's no corrosion in there. Dirty contacts can mess things up. So what I did was just use some rubbing alcohol and sprayed it down into here. And if you look really closely, you can see that there's two holes on the sides of these pins. You can actually see inside there, if you look the right angle, and see the little spring and everything that's making contact and completing the circuit. So, what I hope I did was any sort of dirt and grime and grit that got in here, over time, over the life of this switch, hopefully that jostled some of it around. 
Now I am getting this replaced under warranty anyways, so it's not really a big deal if this fixes it or not. So if you wanted to just replace the switch on your own, if you're out of warranty, this is how you would do it. And this is likely where your issue was coming from. Now what we can do is grab my multimeter and test this thing for resistance. So I'm just going to contact so it's open now there's closed open closed so right now it appears to be working It is kind of difficult for me to keep this pin contacting the one on the switch. So right now it appears to be working. This is an intermittent issue. So maybe spraying that isopropyl in here and actuating the switch a bit helped clean it out. We'll see, but that's likely what the issue is. I suppose if somebody's uh, invested in this enough and wanted to try and pull one of these apart, you could probably do so. But like I said, it's likely a very inexpensive switch to begin with, and it's easy enough to just replace. You might as well just replace it. So let's go ahead and reinstall it and put everything back together.